Hey, what is going on guys? This is Eli from Mobox. There are many ways to create such cactus. We will cover some basic techniques, but I think it will be pretty interesting for most of you. As always, you can download my cleaner and more precise file on our Patreon page. So let's hop in Cinema 4D and get started. So first of all, let's start with the first cactus. There are many ways to create such cactus, but I think the easiest and most flexible workflow for this is doing it with splines. So let's go ahead and create a star spline. And we're going to set the plane direction into XZ so it lays flat on the floor. We are going to play around with the inner and outer radius so we get a different shape because this is still very pointy. So first of all, let's scale this down a bit. Um, I found to be 40 centimeters by 58 centimeters to be a nice shape. So you can just play around or enter the values, but you want something that looks like this. Now we have this star, so let's extrude this with the extrude object and drag the star inside of it. You can see we have a kind of weird shape. That is because the extrusion is going to the side. So let's reset this to zero and just use the center value, which means it is going up. So let's say we will make this pretty large, something like 300 centimeters. And we're also going in the caps options. And let's make this on both sides a fillet cap. Um, something like 30 centimeters will do. And you can see this is making it a bit bigger. So let's go down here and check the constraint options so it doesn't increase its size. We are also going to select the create single object option. That makes it a bit better when doing further adjustments. And we're also going to increase the steps of these fillet caps to just two. It is still a bit rough at the ends, but we want that because the smoothing will happen with the subdivision surface. So with this extrude object selected, hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and click the subdivision surface. That way it will be the parent of this extrusion and you can see it gets smoothed. It doesn't need to be that smooth, so we can just use the subdivision editor and renderer options at two. Makes it a bit faster. And now maybe one more adjustment we would like to get is making it a bit thicker at the top. So let's use the taper deformer for example. And um, we're going to raise this up and manually replicate the size of this. So maybe let's say 200 by 200. That's close enough. Let's increase the strength of this. So something like minus 30%. And you can also play around with the curvature if you want to. But you can see nothing is happening to the actual cactus. That is because we need to make sure this is grouped together. So select all of this and press Alt and G to group this together in a new null. And I'm already going to call this cactus. And you can also notice the deformer is being applied by this. Okay, so that's the first part. Now we would like to have some arms at the sides here, like a typical cartoon cactus. So let's click on this spline pen tool. And we're going in the front view. That makes it a bit more clean when drawing stuff. Let's start somewhere close to the center. And just make an L shape like this. Make sure you deselect the spline. So click somewhere down here. And we're going to create a second arm. Maybe a bit lower and a bit smaller. Like this. Hit escape to cancel the last point. So we can end the drawing. Now if we go back in the perspective mode, you can see it is perfectly centered to this cactus. So that's why I wanted to do it in the front view. Now we will have to replicate this shape on these splines. There are multiple ways to do this again, but I think the sweep object is the easiest option. So let's create a sweep object. We are going to duplicate this star, so hold Ctrl or Command to make a duplicate while dragging it. And we're going to enter this star and spline inside of the sweep object. And you can see something is happening, but the star is still set to the XZ plane. So let's try some different options. And you can notice XY is the correct one. So the star is a bit too big, so let's just scale this down. And we also need to set the cap options on the sweep object. So let's just go for the end one. I think it's that one. Fill out cap. And we're also going to constrain this again and create a single object. And it can go in two steps. And let's make it a bit bigger. But make sure you don't overdo it because it will go back to the other side. So stay under that, like this. We're also going to put this inside of a subdivision surface again. It makes it a bit smoother. And if you don't like this curve, you could go in the spline here. And let's go in the point mode and somewhere 
at the bottom here there should be a point so maybe you need to set the radius a bit bigger so you can find it and right click chamfer and click and drag to make the curve exactly like you want it to okay so that's a nice first arm I'm going to duplicate just this subdivision surface and I'm just going to delete this spline and drag the second one we just created under here so that's easy what you could also do is creating a new null for example with the subdivision surface inside of it which is the arm and we're going to duplicate that taper deformer inside of there too we need to adjust the scaling and the position of course but that way you could have a more top heavy arm like this so that's up to you if you want to do that or you just like the original look one more thing I think could be useful for you is to hide the taper deformers just in the viewport so double click this top dot until it goes red okay so let's just name this we're going to group all of this together in a new null just to keep a bit of overview now we would like to have some pins of this of course so let's create these pins which are basically cones so let's raise this up to see how this could look and go in the object mode I think the size of this can be pretty small so let's go with something like just six centimeters on the bottom radius and it also doesn't have to be that long so um, let's go with something like 30 I think that could look nice so now we want many of these on the whole thing uh, we will have to do this in separate steps so we can do that with a cloner object let's drag the cone inside of the cloner and we will need multiple cloners for this so one cloner for every part of the cactus so three in this case I'm just going to place this above the body parts just to keep it clear visually in the hierarchy um, we are going to change the mode of this cloner to object and inside of this body group we will find the subdivision surface so drag the subdivision surface inside of the object field of the cloner you can see we have multiple clones but they are being aligned to the object so disable align clone now they're pointing up like we created it originally but we want it to be rotated so let's go with minus 90 degrees i think or actually we can keep the align clone option that's why it's not working so if you use minus 90 degrees in the transform tab on the p value it should be like you want it to let's increase the clones of this to something like let's say 60 and you can also play around with the seed values it's totally up to you I think this looks okay now we want the same thing to happen on the other parts so let's duplicate this in between here and we're going to open the subdivision surface as well so select the cloner drag the subdivision surface in here so that works but maybe we want a bit less of these so I think something close to 20 25 is just enough and let's do a last one where we also change the object and there we go so that's a lot of parts for just one cactus but this one is finished maybe it's a good time to set up some basic lighting and basic materials so we can move on a bit faster in the end and it's just a bit easier to see the differences so the first thing I would like to do is creating a basic lighting setup for this kind of cartoony style. It's kind of the same as I usually do it in other videos. So let's go over this quickly. First of all we need the physical sky, which only comes with the studio version of Cinema 4D I guess. So if you don't have it, you have a broadcast version for example. I just recommend getting the studio version actually. <laughs> so let's set the time to something like 2pm. We are also going to create a new light object and go down here to set the ambient illumination option that makes it a bit brighter and the shadows less hard I'm also going to create a floor for just now to get some shadows let's go in the render settings and add an effect which will be the ambient occlusion and for now I think that should be it for just the lighting so let's render and see how this looks for now okay so that looks nice enough in terms of lighting but it is still very grey so let's create some first materials so the first material will be for the cactus of course you can use anything you like again but I'm going with a very bright green so that's just the color it's up to you but what I would like to do is making some changes in the reflectance tab so down here all I want to do is increasing the width of this that makes it a bit more visible um, one more thing I would like to do in this reflectance tab 
Let's go into the color here. Because it is set to white by default, which is kind of boring, we can make this pop even more if we adjust the colors depending on the actual color of the material. So in this case we don't want white, but very light green. Okay, let's drag this on the different parts of the cactus. Now we need one more material for the pins. So let's create a new one. This will be a darker color. And under the reflectance channel we can actually use the same color. So I can go in the other one. Right click on this, copy it, go back here and paste it. Um, we are also going to change some of these values again. So in this case I don't want the width to be that big because it's a very sharp shape. But I'm also going to increase the strength of this to something like 80% for example. And maybe also the width to something like 50. It makes it a bit stronger and a bit more plastic even. So let's drag this on all of these cloners. It looks a bit strong right now because everything around it is grey. But it will look just fine in the end so don't worry. Okay, so I'm going to group this together and put it at the bottom. Great, let's continue with the second cactus. From here on it will be easier because we can use parts of the previous ones. So what I'm going to do is make a small variation on the previous one. So all I need is this center body part. Let's duplicate it outside of the group. I'm going to make this extrusion a lot smaller, something like 110 centimeters. Let's also move this a bit to the back so we can see it. I think that looks nice. Let's also adjust the taper deformer, move it down a bit. And of course we need the cloner of this as well. So um, it's here. But it's inside of the same group as the taper deformer, which we don't want. So let's move it outside of it. And we're going to make sure the subdivision surface is being set to it again. So it sticks to the object. Let's group both of these parts together again. And I'm going to call this Cactus 2. Let's create a new material for the Cactus 2. But I'm just going to duplicate the original one. So we have the reflectance channel uh, being the same. So all we need to do now is adjust the color of this. It's totally up to you again. But I just want something more green to blue. So less at the yellow spectrum but more at the blue spectrum. Let's drag this on the object. Like this. And I think that's a nice variation and a nice color combination. Okay, so let's move on to the third one, which will be quite an easy variation of this one. So before we do that, you can notice that this cloner, its axis is set to the center of this, while the body is being set at a different position. So if we have this group of the cactus, you can see the axis is not centered to the object, which is not nice if we have many of these, because it will not be very precise. So let's adjust this by going in here and maybe we can just select this body one and reset the position to zero. Like this. And we're also going to center this cloner object. So press shift and C with the cloner selected and type in center to parent like this. So now you can see the axis is centered and everything is being aligned. So now you can move this null at the center of the object. Now we can make a duplicate of this part and we are going to make two more of these, but towards the top. So just stack it on top of each other. And you're going to rotate some of these a bit. And um, what you could also do is going in some of these and adjusting the taper deformer to get a bit more variation. And of course, let's group all of this together as Cactus 3. We are going to create a new material for this again, so let's duplicate the other one. And let's make some very small adjustments to the color. Okay, let's continue with the last one, which will be a bit more difficult to make because there are multiple steps to this. So first of all, we want a copy of the original one again. So maybe let's just use Cactus 2 because that's the simplest one. I'm going to copy this and paste this. Let's call this Cactus 4. Under the body, we want an extrusion, which will be quite large actually. So something like this even. We can also adjust the taper deformer again. Or actually, let's delete the taper deformer because we don't need it in the end. You will see why in just a minute. Let's also move this to the back again. So for this one, I recommend making the star a bit smaller. So we have a thin cactus part. And now we're going to use the bend deformer. Drag it inside of the body group. And we want it to be centered to the parent again, so to the null. That way we are sure it is centered to this cactus as well. 
So let's manually adjust the size of this. So we had the star, which is about 30 centimeters. So let's make this uh, 40 centimeters. And we're also going to make this a bit taller. So it covers the whole thing. So now we have this yellow dot at the top. You can use this to drag this around and create different variations. You can also notice this top right here. I don't like it, so we have to go to the caps options of the extrusion. And let's make this a bit smaller, something like 10 centimeters even. Or maybe 20. Yeah, that works just fine. So now the whole concept of this is to create multiple copies of this and make it different lengths and different bends. So I'm just going to speed it up because it is just randomly placing stuff. Okay, so this may not be the most perfect one. Um, I just did a quick one to save some time. So that's all there is to this tutorial. As always, you can download my cleaner and more precise file on our Patreon page. If you created something of your own, we are happy to see it on Instagram or Twitter. Also, I hope you learned something new today and I will see you in the next video.